After a month in which deputies were involved in four shootings in 2014, the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office began making changes. The goal put deputies in fewer shoot, don't shoot situations and their tactics changed. But the key to whether an officer fires his or her weapon still comes down to the perception of danger to themselves or to others. Tonight, look into how they train to make those life or death decisions through untrained eyes. Mine. A South Carolina cop guns down a man running away. A Chicago cop empties his gun into a man in the street. Just two of the wave of police shootings on video seared into the national consciousness. The officers in those cases are both charged with murder. Law enforcement now fights a new battle. Not only get it right when using deadly force, but also convince the skeptics when the perception is just the opposite. All they're being shown is the worst of the worst. Please, sir, both hands out of the pockets, please. Listen, I got a gun. All right, I got a gun. Sir, I got sir, a sir, for it. sir, please. All right. Please put your hands on the car for me. Yeah. Palm Beach County Sheriff Rick Bradshaw wanted me to go through a firearms training simulator drill. It's no Xbox game. The scenarios are taken from real life and death police calls. We've actually had people panic. Uh, we've had people just stop and say, hey, this is more than I thought it was. Listen, I got a gun. All right, I got a gun. Sir, I got sir, a sir, right. sir, please, right. please put your hands on the car for me, yeah, right, please. Bang, sir. bang, 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 bang. <laughs> Why did you make the decision not to shoot? I thought I saw he didn't have a gun. Okay. I thought I saw he didn't have a gun. Once you made the decision he's here, there's no gun, by the time you realize, it may be too late. The sheriff's office use of lethal force policy is straightforward. The proper response is based on the deputy's perception at the time he or she fires the weapon, not on what the analysis can be after the fact. The confusion, the questions, and the fatal mistakes come in the dynamics of the real moment. A frantic 911 call has been received. The young male caller stated his stepfather is going wild and is beating the caller's sister. Sir, stop now or I'll fire. Why did you decide to wait so late to shoot? I shouldn't say late, yeah, as no, long. Um, I thought he would, first of all, I thought the mace and the stick would stop him. Correct. I also was very aware and very afraid of shooting the partner. You made the right call. You had less lethal employed, had no effect, but at some point you have to say, he is armed because he has the ability to cause great bodily harm or death. But this is still a make-believe vacuum standing in front of a screen with a laser-operated gun. What we're doing now is trying to get my heart rate up. What's the, what's the idea of getting the heart rate up? Uh, just the added stress because when our deputies respond to these scenes like you've seen thus far, um, their heart rates are going to spike uh, in response to whatever the situation is. When you go in, the weapon will be already charged, right? Don't ask any questions, go right into the scenario. He's gonna hand you the gun. My heart rate is up. My breathing is a little heavy. All right, get down, get down on the ground. Get down on the ground right now. Down on the ground. Because I miss when I'm ambushed, the sheriff tells me I failed. A lot of things going on in your mind. Where do I go? Where do I stand? Where's my partner? What is she doing? Why is she not complying? Please follow his orders. The last scene is the most confusing and disturbing. A traffic stop, a wanted man, and a preteen girl bursting from the truck with a shotgun pointed at me. I shoot, miss, and stop firing, but... She's still a danger. Put that gun down! Put the gun down! One of the hardest things to teach a police officer for active shooters, especially at schools, is when you have a child who is in imminent danger to you or someone else. What I saw was a long gun come out of the truck. Why did you want me to take this test? Because I want you to get the absolute feeling that a deputy gets when they go through the training, but to try to get just a little bit of a feeling on how quick things happen. What'd you learn in there? Wrong decision, you're dead. You don't go home to your little girl or your wife. That rash of shootings just a few years ago led to new instructions for deputies on patrol for Palm Beach County. They take more time now before closely approaching any dangerous situation, and they call for backup sooner, hopefully putting themselves less frequently 
in harm's way. And Chair Bradshaw also says the change made in many law enforcement agencies across the country now cut deputy involved shootings here, he believes, from about a dozen in a calendar year to less than half that the next year. My goodness, you see that. It's so eye-opening. I watched it, and I, I, I went through it, and my, I, my heart started to race again. Well, I was holding my breath watching it and watching you go through that. At what point do deputies go through this type of training? Well, they, they, they gave me a lot of credit later on. I wasn't good at this, but the deputies usually go through about 40 hours of shooting range training. They have classroom training. Then they take this for the first time, and then uh, deputies who are on patrol uh, will go through the simulator again every one year to two years.